Good morning, everyone. It's already noon, but uh, I uh, say hello to our Art Matters New York group. Uh, I'm here with, uh, I'm Hans Vici. Good morning, everyone. Okay. It's already noon, but uh, I uh, say hello to our Art Matters New York group. Uh, I'm here with, uh, I'm Hans Vici. Good morning, everyone. Okay. It's already noon, but uh, <laughs> I uh, say hello to our Art Matters New York group. Uh, I'm here with, uh, I'm Hans Vici. Funny. So let's see, we try with this echo. Uh, Maybe it's gone now, could be. Probably it's gone now. Yeah. So we start again. Start and then, okay, I, sorry, I don't, I don't know what No, I doing. know, I know, it's like this thing. Where's Barbara? Uh, I don't know. She comes back, probably back. But anyway, good morning, everyone. This is Art Matters New York. I'm Hans Vici, and I'm here with my colleague, Mark Safan. Morning. Yeah. And uh, Leslie is here, and Mary. <laughs> and Barbara will join us soon again. Uh, I think she dropped out, but uh, she comes back. And uh, yeah, we are this uh, group which discusses uh, artwork of our uh, members and we are especially excited today to see work of Barbara Lowen's team. She sent us some drawings which had to do with some photographies or whatever as I uh, rem uh, remember me and uh, Mark, we can't do we can't do the show without her though. <laughs> uh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but we have her artwork, and we can talk about. I, I guess now we can talk uh, freely. Okay. Um, <laughs> do you, you want to restart or? No, Mark? no, we are live now. I think. All right, Mark. Can you send Barbara? <laughs> oh my gosh! Can you send Barbara a text? Because I don't have my phone. <laughs> But we, we, maybe we can talk about uh, something else in the meantime. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, uh, Leslie, we don't hear you. You have to unmute yourself. I mean, I could send something really quickly to someone to talk about or share. Oh, yeah, or yeah or Leslie, send something. That's great. Until Barbara okay. is back. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes artists disappear. <laughs> Not only the artwork disappears, but <laughs> the artists. So we, we'll see what's happening. Okay. <laughs> should I send it to, who should I send it to? You could send it to... Uh, Hans, should or, I send it to you, Hans? Or, or can you share it right away from your computer? Uh, by sharing uh, the screen. I think it might be better if I, let me see. Um, okay. Yeah, send it to me and I will see what I can do. Oh. Okay. Mark, while we're waiting, I really like those paintings in the back. Yeah, they're beautiful. I was looking at them earlier. They're, those you've seen, I mean, those, those have been around. They're just hanging around the studio. Just beautiful. Well, thank you. Okay, you'll let me know if you get that, Hans. <laughs> Sorry? You let me know if you get that. Otherwise, I will share my screen. I, you can I'm do clicking. it, Leslie. You can do it. I'm practically. <laughs> what the heck happened, happened to Barbara? <laughs> <laughs> now, Leslie, I got it. Let's see. No, something. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, unbelievable. Some days oh, are okay. Let's see. I need to 
Oh, okay. You saying just a couple of works. Three. There yeah. should be three there. Otherwise, yeah. I can share my screen for sure. No, but I have to download first those things. Oh, Leslie, you have a pretty cat. I have, yeah. This is my old man cat, Romeo. <laughs> oh, oh, he's beautiful. He is a handsome fellow. Does he sleep with you? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> he's very snuggly. He's very needy. He always likes to be on my lap. Like when you sleep, does he sleep by your feet? Somewhere on the bed with all the other creatures. <laughs> that, so that I'm able to. <laughs> oh, Should I share my screen or? No, 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 no. I, I, I will just do that. Whoops. I've just to find my. Mark, did Zoom you program. text Barbara? I did. I really do love those. Oh, here she says. Uh, she Mark. said she's locked out. She said, I have the original Zoom screen. It won't let me join the meeting. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Marie? Yeah, I don't. She said she's locked out. I'm going to send her the, the meeting. Yeah. You should simply just do. <laughs> do you see uh, the screen? Yeah. OK, OK. Yeah, Leslie, tell us something Leslie? that looks like print or what? What? Uh, what? Uh, yeah. yeah what? So, so when I when I when I can't get to my studio as much as I want, I do printmaking at home. And um, what I do is I take my photography and I turn them into carved wooden plates. Sometimes the plates are actually prettier than the prints. And um, so these are actually small test prints, and. Um, this actually is not a great crisp picture, but I really particularly like this one. And I think I'm going to um, make a very large plate. This is a very small plate, um, eight by 10. I'm going to make like a, a 40 inch plate because I really was happy with it. And um, I would like to um, play with maybe some hand coloring of it. Um, and um, yeah, I was just very happy with the imagery, even though this picture is a little fuzzy. But um, so this was kind of a test print to see, because you never know when you, when I take the photography, I put it in Illustrator and I make a CAD file and I never know how, how much to take out and put in. So it's always risky. Um, this one happened to work out fairly well. I love it. I, I love the composition. I even love like the scratchiness of it. I, I like the negative and positive aspects of it. This I I I was sort of dealing with Barbara here, so I wasn't listening. Was this is this derivative from a photo? Yes, it is. It's it's a photo that um that mm -hmm. I have etched into a piece of wood, and then I oh. make a wood plate, and I make a rubbing a print. And, what do you um, mean? What do you mean a photo that you? Oh, you had the well, photo. I, How did you etch it into the wood? So I take I take the photo and um and I take it into Illustrator and I play with the imagery till I think it will make a good wooden plate and then I have it laser cut into a piece of wood. Oh wow! And, yeah, and these these are very small test prints. They're only eight by ten. This one I think would look great, really large. So I'm hoping to make it really large. Um, and this one I think would look best. I might actually try and print it on some aluminum oh, or yeah. some mirror. I really want to experiment with surfaces and maybe <laughs> some hand, you know, hand <laughs> as well. But I could picture this one very large. This picture is slightly fuzzy. And um, but I was still very happy with it because I was saying, Mark, that um when you do send it out you don't really know how your plate will come out so i do these little oh. prints first before I. So is, the, is the whole thing photographically generated or is there actually hand uh elements hand markings carvings cuttings scratches anything or is it all um, photographically? It's this is. I mean, it's really a digital, a digitally based process. The handwork comes in with well, 
So there's the judgment of how much to take out and how much to keep in the image. So that's, that's. Well, I'm just, I'm just but, asking because it looks like it could be, you know, a scratch. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is that this is hand rubbed onto paper. So no print is going to be alike because you're hand rubbing it. And so how you rub in it, you can, you can rub scratches in it. You can emboss it. You could rub certain areas, not rub other areas. No, I, under, I get that. I understand yeah. that. I'm just saying the image yeah. itself. Well, yeah, it, the image itself is photography. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. I got it, yeah. I understand. It is a very photographic <laughs> process. I was saying that, Yeah. you know, when I can't get to my studio a lot to paint, or um, I also love to paint outside. So if I can't paint outside or get to my studio, which hasn't happened a lot this year, then this is a great process for me to do at home. So it's my go-to at home process. <laughs> oh. So... Um, this is another small test print and you really cannot tell what the top, what the photo was of. Um, again, you know, until you do a test print, you don't really know how much of the photo, if you've left in enough of the photo or not. But I decided that I don't really care that you can't tell what it is. I happen to like the patterns in that, well, the one yeah. we're talking about. Can you describe your process again? Oh, I'm getting the yeah, oh, Barbara, getting turn the off your, Barbara, turn off your phone. Yeah. The session okay. in your phone. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm trying to. Jeez. So even oh, though mom. even though I think there's a few issues. Oh. Okay. Can we go back to the middle one that I yeah. So even though there were a few issues with this with this plate and with some composition, that small little tiny composition things. I love the patterns and the contrast of the patterns and then sort of the messiness in the middle. There's a lot of things I like about this and I think it would be really fun to do some kind of color version of it. Mm -hmm. I can't the see the bottom because of all the images. Mm. Yeah, I know it's this. Oh, there you go. That's yeah. good. Thanks, Hans. Yeah. Oh, I, I like this a lot too. Yeah. yeah. Very interesting. I just couldn't see the bottom part because yeah. I like it. I, yeah, I that's think the it, most. Uh, uh, it's know, interesting, right? right? Yeah. Is, it, is, it the bro is it the broken iPhone or what is it? Is they, is, is, is... It's actually a giant. It's the, it's, it's like um, I was in a field and there were some, some, uh, I love old industrial stuff. It's like something that's very appealing to me. And this mm. was an old truck, a cab front of a cab of a truck, just sitting there like with oh, woods yeah. around it. Yeah. And it, okay. so, so some of what you see in the textural part in the center is actually growth on the truck. And mm. then the dots are the grill of the truck. And I like, oh. I like the, I like the organization of the grill and in contrast with the messiness of the front. And I will go back and revisit the image. Like, like the palm trees, I would go make a large plate just how, how it is. This one, I think I want to figure out what else is going on mm -hmm. around the grid and around the, the textures mm -hmm. and see what else I can subtract or add. Leslie, could you describe your process again? I, I wasn't online for some reason. My It's I, a photographic process. This is a photographic process that I do at home when I can't get outside to paint or get to my studio. I'll, I'll okay. sometimes go to this one where I take photography and I make a CAD file out of it. And then I have a, uh, a plate cut out of wood. And then I, it's a wooden plate that I hand rub mm. onto paper. This is really good uh, printmaking paper. I use Reeves. I use Reeves because... Some of my printmaking has a lot of pencil drawing on it. Mm -hmm. And so that paper is really great for really detailed pencil drawing. And then I combine that with printmaking. And you were saying something about having the, the, uh, the block etched from the photo impression? No? So it's, it's cut into the wood. The image is cut into the wood. So you do lose a lot of detail. So you have to, you know, some images I know will not work well. 
So what I'm doing is my husband's into photography. So we took all these pictures of these, of this iconography in New Orleans. We were there for mm -hmm. a month. We took pictures of mm -hmm. a lot of people there have um, statuary and um, all kinds of objects on their front porches. It's like a custom or something. And it's oh. very unique and very interesting. And so we sure. took a lot of pictures of those. And may, we might try and do a series this way. I'm not sure. Certain subjects work really well with this process and others just don't. It really depends. Yeah. You yeah. know, because you you have, you lose a lot of detail. So you, you need things with rich texture for it to come yes. across properly. So interesting. So it just reduces everything to positive or negative, black or white. Right, right. right. It's just a high <laughs> contrast. Um, Filter. It's a graphic. It's a very graphic. It's yeah, turning graphic. everything into a graphic image. But yeah. but I I like I like combining actually pencil drawings with this process. Right. And I think it's yeah. a very interesting combination. So I will be like this is a very beginning of maybe a few. I have about ten other plates to try. Actually, these there was another plate I guess didn't get on. I didn't get to send you, but. Um, mm. Yeah, so. I, I really like all of these. I, what I like about this one is the, the movement of the, the tree, the, um, mm. the, yeah. the, the middle part, the, <laughs> the, the branches, the trunk. I yeah. love how, the, how it just, mm. it's just beautiful. Yeah. It may, I mean, interesting. I mean, maybe, how big are they? How big are these? Well, these these test prints are very small. They're like eight by ten. But the the finished ones that I do once I once I decide what I want to print them on, like for instance, the ones with the iconography, I want to print those on fabric because I want to I want to relate those to people's you know individual choices about what they put out in their homes. So I want to do it on different fabrics. So mm -hmm. those would be large like tapestries and some of these more uh, some of these more nature focused ones will be about 40 inches, uh, like 35 by four, 33 by 40 or something like that. Mm -hmm. There's a limit with the wood in terms of if you want to if you want a real detail, you know, something that's really cut well, you're limited in size unless you mm -hmm. add to it by hand work, which is. I don't have the hand strength anymore. <laughs> Even rubbing, it's hard. I actually just bought a very small press for at least the test prints. So I only have to rub the big ones now. Do you prime the paper with anything before doing the rubbing? I actually do. I find the ink adheres. Well, I you have to like this. Actually, the test prints, I use my older ink. And then when I go to the, the finish, the really good pieces, because they're, all, they're only one of a kind, I use really good ink and I miss the paper very, very, very faintly first because it helps the ink mm -hmm. thing comes uh, much better when the paper is very slightly damp, moist, you know. Mm -hmm. If it's too wet, then you get what you see here in the middle. <laughs> because, oh. it, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. I think the technical word for that is smudge. Smudge, yes, you get <laughs> smudges. You get yeah. smudges. Also, you, you want to be careful how you rub it because I've tried all different tools and certain tools will make patterns in the print. And sometimes that adds uh, to the print and sometimes yeah. it takes away. So how sure. you rub it with your hand and what you use makes a difference as well. Cause you can create mm -hmm. texture by doing that, but you know, you don't always want that. Yeah. Yeah. I have Just a quick question. Why, why do you choose to laser engrave wood? Is wood a, the best material? or like a plate transfer or? I mean, you know, lots of people do photo silk screen. You know, they have they have a dark room. They'll do a photo silk screen. You can put it yeah. on anything, you know. Um, I don't know. I mean, the wood plates themselves um, are really beautiful. I, I have more that you haven't seen. I could maybe show more next week because yeah. um, I have some big ones that um, are really great. And the 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 wood plates themselves are beautiful. Um, I 
I don't know. It's just, I like, I like the wood. It's, it's, it breathes, it's natural, the paper. I, I don't know what I like about it. Um, so is there a, is there a lab or a shop that does the laser cutting into the wood? Um, actually, I have a shop. Um, I actually introduced a lot of people in my studio. My studio has about 60 artists and I, um, in three buildings, and I introduced a bunch of people to the shop, and now they are swamped with um, <laughs> all my fellow artists use them because they cut plexi and they cut metal as well. Mm. So um, I've bought so some it, aluminum panels. I want to try these on aluminum actually, and then hand. So is it cut with like a, a like a bit, a drill, a laser, like a laser, mm -hmm. a laser. Yeah, like my, I i don't know if any of you have seen my bird installations, but those were steel cut birds by laser, you know. Beautiful. Um, yeah, they're really great. They're in upstate New York, and they're maybe a third or a quarter of the price of anything you'd find in the tri-state area. You know, there's one, uh, a very, very sophisticated lab that's completely outfitted with all of the most high-tech gear, like in our adjacent town, Chatham up yeah. here and they're also very very they're half the price of yeah new york yeah shops. yeah um, and they do all manner of things they do uh you know laser cutting and um as well as 3d printing and a whole bunch of other stuff yeah mm -hmm. i love Amazing that. The dots. <laughs> yeah that's that's good. Good. i love this i think this is so great yeah, yeah. yeah. It reminds me a little bit of a, a Lichtenstein, you know, oh, like with the, with the dots. Yeah, with the dots. Like you're making that so big. Oh. It reminds yeah. me of Morris Code a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> That's true, too. Oh. Yeah. Who? It almost gets more interesting the more you go in. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Huh. It's like a DNA. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 It's like a DNA sequence. Yeah. Uh -huh. I see zero and ones and fours. Oh, that means Leslie has brown eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, look at this. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, that's incredible, Leslie. It just seems. Thank you. But, but, but you said they are now test prints because, uh, you know, I see, I mean, I see, you know, that you are testing here the printing, what, what, some, what, what it's printed. That's why you take these different images. They, they don't really relate to each other. No, right? no, they're just testing. Because this to is see a snow, what, snow right. situation, then you have some pounds. So that's, you know, so it's not yet uh, in a, uh, it's just on a technical level what right. we are seeing and not right. yet uh, on the art uh, uh more it, uh, you know, personal yeah 100 percent correct because no. once i see a group of images like you know like images that work really well i will try them on different surfaces and i'll try them with my drawings my handwork my pencil drawings and i'll try them with painting and I, yeah, so there's a, so this is kind of a very beginning of a process. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I actually, the ones that I did, I did some last year, a whole bunch of big ones with geometric shapes combined with, you might have seen them, geometric shapes combined with nature. I did a whole bunch of huge ones. Love those. I love them. Yeah, and some of them are very successful. The ones that are not successful, I'm actually going to take out of their frames and maybe do some overprinting or add some drawing to it. And mm -hmm. that'll help me experiment for what I want to do with these. Mm -hmm. After you have the plate, um, uh, after it's been engraved um, and you're printing, are you printing by hand? Yes. Okay. Hand Here's rubbing. The Right, hand rubbing a baron or or either whatever you're using. Whatever yeah. I use, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then I put my hands in hot wax to make them feel better. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Sure. A lot a lot of rubbing. A lot of rubbing and scrubbing. Yeah. 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 Nice. It's interesting though, because you really get very different techniques than you could, you know, if you 
painted or drew it, you know, you're getting really interesting yeah. marks. Yeah. yeah. There's there's uh, some of the original original uh, ones on my website that you guys can see too. Yeah. Oh, the first one that we saw reminded me most of those graphic the original ones, yeah. The original yeah, ones. This one's yeah. Yeah, I think that this what I also like about the original ones and this one is that it's so interesting that you see like this 3D, like I love that line, you know. Yeah. And yeah. It, it's like a frame within a frame kind of. Right. Oh, and it all when I do it large and I and I put some you know, maybe a graphic shape of color to make that wall, yes, and maybe yeah. some handwork on top. It'll look very different. Mm. It'll yeah, really, it'll, it. it'll, it'll, it'll be a whole piece as opposed to just this, you know. Well, this is very graphic, though. It's such an interesting uh, yeah. blend be between photography and drawing. Yeah. So, you know, what you do to the photograph is, is what, you know, makes this part of it. And then the rest is, you know, just deciding, you know, whether you want to add color and form and mm. you know, handwork or not. And but, how would you go about adding color? Did you just say, I'm sorry, I might as well. I mean, I, I add color with, um, I use rollers and printmaking ink to add color. And I also use, um, depending what it's on, if it's on paper, I use pencil and I use mm -hmm. uh, printmaking ink to add color. If so you're, you're doing hand, hand coloring. Yeah, hand coloring. If it's, on, um, if it's on a material, like, uh, like I'd like to put some of these on aluminum, then I would do mm -hmm. some like hand tinting, you know, with, so, mm -hmm. so that's where the, playing in the artist, you know, artistic vision comes in. Like yeah. Han said, this is the technical level at this point, <laughs> figuring yeah. out, figuring out technically how to make the image as strong as possible. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Yeah. But I, I love this about you, Leslie. I, I love how you bring your experience with graphic artists together with your fine art. And I think you really come up with some super interesting. Yeah. Yeah. You know, art pieces. You know. Yeah. Huh. I love that you're not afraid of technical processes. Yeah. Well, it's which I am. <laughs> Me too. Uh, yeah. Fun. Okay. We can't get away from it in one area or the other, right? Well, no, it's strange. We get away from it. That's well, great, Leslie. Thank you for uh, thank you so much. With us, we are. I hope we, can we, we, I hope we can revisit those when they're more developed, when yeah. the idea get more evolved, when the imagery, you know, the consistency, or when we can start seeing a direction. Yes. Yes. Right now, as as we've all said, it's you're like you're working out technical mm -hmm. problems. It feels right. right. So what's next, Mark? I think Barbara Lowenstein. Okay, um, let me do this. Uh, these are, I, I, I don't know, I, I, I'm very ambivalent about these. <laughs> Should we start with this one? All right. Uh, do you want to? It's up to you. Sure. Okay. It's okay. Well, maybe that we know what we are going to see. Maybe well, no, it's just two pieces. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Well, they're so different from each other, Barbara. Tell us about them. Okay. All uh, right. Uh, this was, I, I haven't done any watercolor in, in quite a while. Uh, I've been using watercolor crayons a lot, but I, I saw something that I was very interested in. Um, and I started... It was actually a photograph, and I started to uh, do a, a sketch of the photograph, and, and I realized while I was filling in some of the areas that I was doing something completely different, so I, I kind of went with that, and then um, I got very frustrated using the watercolor, and, I, and so I did a lot of 
uh, putting down paint and taking off paint and putting it down and taking it off and then trying different textural areas. Um, and that's basically where I'm at. I just kept going with that over a period of a couple of hours then I let it dry, went back to it, did a little bit more. I've, I actually, um, I've, I've, I kind of lean towards this process myself of, of taking away and giving back and it creates, you've created, a, uh, the layers really create some kind of interesting effect here because as I'm looking at it, it's kind of changing for me constantly. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's really interesting, you know, it's, it's, um, it's like subtle with a lot going on at the same time, because that's what happens when you use that process, I think. And it yes. gives a little bit of mystery and a little bit of depth. And at first it looked very flat to me and now it doesn't look flat at all to me. So as I stare at it, it's really changing. It's really interesting. Well, thank you, thank you. Oh, I forgot to say I also did some textural stuff. Um, uh, I had some corrugated cardboard, I uh, used some fingerprints. Um, at one point, I even tried to make a monoprint of the watercolor because I felt that there was, it was just, I didn't think it was going to go anywhere. So I, I just pulling away the, the, the top piece, which didn't turn out, kind of changed the way the paint is on here and left a little residue there that added more texture. So I I uh, I see the point like what Leslie said, you know, before. But I think when I look at the whole piece, I can't really relate to it. I don't know what it is about, and uh, I, I I really don't know. It's like a, you know, mm -hmm. especially these lines down there, you know, these parallel lines. Yeah. I don't know, is it? I don't know what it what it should do or what it. For me, it doesn't make sense. I don't know what what I'm looking at. <laughs> I'm saying I, I, <laughs> I don't know what the, I don't understand your brain here. I don't know what <laughs> what's going on. Maybe it's a good sign, but uh, you know, I I, <laughs> I need some more help. I don't know what. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get yeah. it. That definitely has an ambiguity about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, was well, okay. I, I, I understand, Barbara, what I'm going to take the other uh, point of view here. I sort of understand that you're trying to, that it's very, very hard to seize on a specific image. And so you're kind of uh, trying to let an image of something of meaning emerge rather than dictating exactly what that is. You're, you want to find it in the experience, somehow find it in the materials and in the process. I think in this case, it hasn't developed. I think it's still, um, yeah. you know, it's still very ambiguous. It's yeah. ephemeral, you know, um, and I think that, you know, so you can, you can talk about artists like, let's say Rothko or certain abstract expressionists that sort of figured out how to make very powerful imagery while still remaining very, very um, mm -hmm. uh, ephemeral, let's say, or, uh, mm -hmm. you know, not literal. Uh, and I think mm -hmm. that's sort of your, you, you know, you want to, you want things to emerge. You want them to kind of take some sort of, you know, have some emotional meaning without a literal meaning. Um, that's to me what you're looking for. But there is kind of, you know, graphic reality to making art. You know, you have to deliver a, you know, a sort of a coherent image. And yeah. that, so it's like this kind of, uh, um, you know, it's a paradox in a way what you're attempting to do. But I, I understand 
where you're coming from. I'll <laughs> put it that way. I think you can, you know, use your um, mm. your skills, your experience, and you you know you can try to push these, try to make them, you know, something like this, you know, in, into your bag of tricks, and see if you can make it, you know, more of a coherent mm. image. Unless you just really want it to be, you know, something like. You know, on the other end of the spectrum, you have Bruno, right? <laughs> Who is, you know, makes it completely ephemeral, but that's clear. It's conceptual. Yeah. It's absolutely clear that it's, you know, an absence. You know, it's a, and it's a conceptual framework that's yeah. very, very, you know, specific. So uh -huh. I think you have to figure out, you know, I think that's the problem you have, that you have to develop and you mm -hmm. have to resolve is how to put those two tendencies, those two things together. Yeah. One creating an image, the other creating a sort of an emotional space. But, but still, I, uh, Mark, I mean, you are right, but I understand that too, you know? Yeah, but, of course. Uh, but but I, I, I've, I've never seen I, I, an image like that from Barbara. Usually she's very uh, clear and, uh, I mean, and poetic. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I compare what I saw before, and that's why I said I mm. can't make yeah. any sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't well, know so it what looks what you are aiming at, because, you, you know, all, all the pieces I saw, they had yeah. much more, uh, you know, uh, mm. something going on. I yeah, it's, 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 to me, this is it's a little bit non-committal. Like, you haven't committed to anything yet. Oh, yeah. right. Other than scratching around. Other than scratching around. Scratching. <laughs> I like that. No, I I agree with you both. It's it's uh, yeah. It in a sense though, I'm I feel like it's become like almost a cloud and rain and you know, very atmospheric, um un maybe unrealized, but uh it was kind of a reflection of where I was at. Uh, there was no way that I could have uh, done anything yeah. that or You know, it's all, also difficult, you know, because there are, you know, you can always take a section and say, oh, I like this section so much, you know. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? And yeah. but, but that's sometimes also a bit tiring because you find in each painting a section which you like you know right to understand even then in you a have to cut it up then you have to cut it up like, uh, even in bad paintings you find a section which is beautiful you know absolutely yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. So when, uh, when, when i look at the same yeah. you know, yeah. i can say i like this yellow up there this orange and then the blue and you know yeah yeah and, yeah you, know, you could you could immediately make a connection to to some uh, Dürer uh, uh, watercolor where he mm. painted maybe, uh, you know, uh, mm. a, a, a lake or whatever. And mm. you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So you have always, yeah. you, know, you can open your mind, but uh, and maybe the whole piece would be even a little bit better if there would be not this, this racket thing down there, I, you know, this which is completely, uh, out of I don't know what you know it's like that uh, bothers you there. I don't get it. Yeah, I don't get it. What the, you know also I thought, I were, thought also of a cloud. What the, but I didn't want to say it because you know I, uh, sometimes you know uh, but it's you know what does not work. What bothers me too is this line, the division mm -hmm. between this space and this yeah. space. In other words, if it were just more overall without this division, then I would sort of understand it. You could just sort of jump into the, you know, color field as yeah. it were, this big, mm -hmm. you know, immense space. But this kind of, I don't understand mm -hmm. this cut here between yeah. these two, you know, sky, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, ground, mm -hmm. figure, mm -hmm. sky. You know, <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah. But, if, but you see, usually, you know, we make always this game with turning it around. And if you if you would turn it around by 90 thing, it would become a, a back, you know, you could then immediately say, oh, this is uh, 
uh, you know, like the, the bathtub paintings, uh, you know, the back of the woman in the bathtub and oh. so on. You know, you could immediately see yeah. Some, yeah. Uh, anatomically, you know. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, you it know, it like that. Yeah, could be sure. like a, a Deca uh, study, you know, which uh, you found uh, mm. somewhere, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, interesting. That's you, you know what I'm saying, or whatever, you know. But uh, yeah, interesting because this automatically, immediately becomes more satisfying this when there's at least something yeah, for much better to. You, you know, liked it better. Yeah, much. yeah. Um, I mean, to me, this mm. this is uh, like okay. Mark was saying. It's uh, to me, it looks like you know you're looking at a female back. And it has yeah. a lot of interest. Yeah. So everything. More interesting. Yeah. So it's, yeah. It's, I saw that before it was turned, you know. But, uh, yeah. but you're right, Hans, which is so yeah. interesting. Why is that? You have all the same pieces and parts. Yeah. It's just the way that, you know, the orientation of everything. The way we read, the way the mind constructs. Because the. Like I like it better this way too, except is for it? the black marks. I'm not sure about. Uh, yeah. No, they are not. It's... Oh. <laughs> That's very interesting. Next. Yes. Next. Okay. Okay. All right. So this is a drawing on a photograph, a drawing of uh, using um, uh, oil pastels. Uh -huh. Excuse me. This I like. I think it's immediately engaging, immediately interesting. There's a lot of, of uh, forms that, you know, are repeating, you know, the stairs we read, of course, is the photographic stairs. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, these, this line, you know, is repeated, is rhymes with these, um, you know, this. Mm -hmm shape is more or less the same size as these this big form in the center mm -hmm. is a really wonderful interesting form and then mm -hmm. with the uh just the drawing in here is really slightly different tone you know a similar color but a different uh value mm -hmm. this is and these I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot to look at in here. Compositionally, it's uh, it's very interesting. It all works. I I agree. I think like it reminds me of like an Escher. You know, oh, the yeah, stairs, yeah. You know, how the stairs, and then the sense of uh, like mm. what's at the top and bottom. Yeah. The perspective of things to me in this makes it interesting because you're playing with it. Yeah. You know, so uh, I think yeah. it's really I, I like this. Yeah, and this the space, like as you say, the play. There's a lot of spatial play. Yeah. Because this is yeah. all a, you know has photographic, naturalistic, um, you know, dimension space, mm -hmm. and this thing is just really sitting on the you know it's like a du buffet, like right there on the surface, you know, very flat, mm -hmm. abstract you know, mm -hmm. in your face. So you have these like two completely different, you know, realities, you know, yeah. that yeah. are somehow working together. Yeah. Just, As a, for me, it's a scary piece, actually. Yeah, there's a little scariness it's, in it. I don't know why. It is, it's a very is brutal, uh, there is a very brutal piece in a way. Yeah, yeah. Which, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, of course, I connect it now maybe with, you know, when you see it in Libya, you know, when this dam broke, these two dams, and there was the, you know, this whole uh, city almost was just flushed uh, out in the, so there, is, you know, it's a very, very destructiveness in here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is, uh, you know, taking over. I mean, it's about power and, uh, and I, I like actually the, you know, the combination with this uh, stairs, you should be able to escape, but you can't, you know, you, 
you would have to escape to the roof or I don't know what, you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. a, it's very, very, very scary. Mm. In a way, definitely. Mm. Yeah, I like that. You're right. It's a, power, it's a powerful piece, I think, you know, the longer I look at it. Thank you. More, Thank you. Uh, you know. Really, Hans, I thought I was so worried that you were going to reject it because that you were going to say, well, it's a photograph. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would never do that. <laughs> Why, would he care? Why do you think he would object to it because it's a photograph? Uh, he has done that before. <laughs> uh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that was undoctored photographs. This oh, is yeah, a yeah. drawing a photograph that has changed it considerably. This, um, I, many years ago, I had a nightmare about an industrial space, some kind of factory that I was trapped in. And mm -hmm. when I saw this photograph, which I didn't happen to take, this is a photograph, I think from the 30s that I happened to see online. Uh, and it just, reminded me of that. Plus I love the, um, the angles, the form of it. And I just, I wanted to change it to conform to my nightmare vision of industrialization. You so know, Hans, you, know Hans, right. you, you captured it very well. I yeah. Hans because was right that it's a nightmare. Yeah. It's, it, true. it's so, um, dynamic it's so not at rest this big shape is just pushing off of the paper right in every way you know it and it's so it's not sitting in any kind of uh you know in any kind of at rest put it that way you know it's not it's really just coming off of the paper out of outside of that frame in every way and tension. I like it very much too, Barbara. I think it's it it's very aggressive. Um, that big form seems very foreboding, um, but I just think it's a powerful piece. Um, and then there's kind of like a really interesting contrast between the way most of it is treated, and then those stairs. No, Barbara, you. No, like you, you did this, right? Yeah, Look. yeah, I did that afterwards. Yeah, so it would be probably nice to try to stay with a piece like this and yeah. do the next one, you know, do a variation of it. I mean, if you think of like Anselm Kiefer or, mm. you know, I mean, it's yeah, yeah. over and over and over and over and over, you know, and then he mm. changed the theme and he does mm. that over and over and over and over and over. You know, it'd be nice to do some variations of this, to learn from it, to take from it. It's a, it's a good piece. It's a successful piece. Mm. Just, yes. And and I, like if, I, if I may something also say, you know, uh, the physicality is so great here. And I think when we would go back and let's say you, you would like to overwork this other piece and, and maybe deal, can you go back to the, you know, if you will go really with that body, then you need, you know, when you have this racket thing going on, maybe you need something to do to, to show also here, let's say, how the body is uh, under attack or whatever, like you mm -hmm. did in this other piece, you know, that mm -hmm. could be a theme you are maybe dealing with, I don't know. But then, you know, you can, this, for me, it, it, that way it, do, it doesn't work, you know, it's like, it, it would really work for me uh, uh, the, uh, as, a, as a, you know, when you really mm. do something with it, uh, which goes in that direction of physi physicality, mm -hmm. as you did in the photograph, you know. I have, I have a question. So if you understand, then you have that, then you, then you have something which these pieces connect, you yes. know. A question, Barbara, was so this whole thing a photograph, and then you painted <laughs> this part. How does this? How did this actually work? That it's a photograph and you know graphic. You know this. This was a very. It's a. 
It was an image of an old photograph that just basically had um, no detail other than the stairs. There, th this, this shape is what drew me to it. Oh. Their shape, which was great. But, you know, of course, it didn't have any of the coloration in it. Mm -hmm. And this was just all dark area, dark. Everything was dark around it. And uh -huh. then there were stairs. It was all dark? Yeah. Well, oh. no, the, this center thing wasn't. It was the, the color of, the, of what's underneath there, mm -hmm. what's underneath my drawing, on that kind of a beige. <clears throat> So it was like this, you know, I'm wondering if I have it here. But, but you know, it's great, Barbara, because you are picking up, uh, you know, the color of the photograph in that, in your, in your uh, overpaint, you know. And yes. that makes it very interesting. If it would be green, the whole thing would not, not, would no, not be no. anything. You no, know? I wanted to keep, you know, the... you, you did, you did something here, you know, of uh, yeah. connecting th those yeah. things, you know. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, this didn't have, you know, it didn't have this division on the left hand side here into different tones. Just the size of the photograph, the whole thing. Uh, yes, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. It was. Um, and you know, I could even read these stairs as a broken spine. You know, uh, you know, you know, a broken spine. Yeah. yeah. So it's Ooh, very that's... destructive, even, you know, it's it's very brutal, this piece, in a way. Yeah. Big yeah. Is this? yeah. How big is the piece? Yes. Uh, let's see, how big is it? I think it was eight and a half by 11 or eight by 10. <clears throat> was, it, was it the original photograph? Um, was I, it pho no, photograph? I, I photographed. What? The, I photographed the photograph that I saw. <clears throat> okay. So it's it's uh, my photograph. Um, you had it printed on what kind of paper? The photo. I printed the photo on. Did you print uh, it at home, like with a printer? Yes, yes. I I have this Epson. I see. Uh, okay, got it. Yeah, and it's so. It on, on it paper. Is it on a nice paper? A good quality paper? Yes, uh, the premium presentation paper. Matt. This is fun. I mean, you, should, that's a, you know, it's a good, maybe it's a good way for you to enter into the art making process with something that already pre-exists, a photograph. You know what I mean? It, it already suggests, you know, something to you. Thank you, Mark, for saying that because I feel very drawn to working this way. So do and it, I, do it. I, I keep feeling like it's cheating. We're supposed to be painting. <laughs> who, who told you that? Yeah. You guys. No, there's no, no, rules. no. no rules. Barbara, that's it. <laughs> you know, I think that that's a really interesting point. Because um, today's uh, session was uh, really interesting because both Leslie and Barbara use photography, but in very different ways. Yes. yes. Now, let me just say something about that, you know, with my own painting, because, yeah. you know, I just started putting cardboard on paintings because I hated painting on just an uninterrupted surface. Yes. I mean, so when I put structure in the form of cardboard, whether I painted it out, and made it disappear or whether I used it and layered it, it was still gave me some structure, like compositional that's structure. That's what's so important. That's why I hate watercolor. Well, well exactly, I understood that immediately. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I, yeah. It water. Yeah. It's what? I think that it's, I think that it's fascinating, <clears throat> this whole um, photography and, you know, just the different takes on it, you know? So it's, uh, I don't know, there's something really interesting about being able to have a wider array of tools that really, yeah. what you're saying, I think 
Mark and Hans, what you guys are saying is it doesn't matter where you start and it no. doesn't matter what tools you use. It just no. matters where you end up. Just make good paintings, period. It's beautifully <laughs> said, Marie. And, and oh, it's you a have to make a good art piece, you know. Yeah. You don't have to make a painting. You can also, I don't know what. To yeah, do. so I, I really enjoyed today's class, watching how you both, you know, use different tools and photography and, um, and printmaking. Printmaking. Yeah. I think, yeah, yeah, I think it was really, it was fascinating mm -hmm. to me. Yeah. Yes. To me, Absolutely. that's much more interesting than painting per se. I don't know why that is, but I, yeah. I get, yeah. You know what, there's, there's a physicality that yeah. some people need. You know, mm -hmm. they need somehow, a, you know, a physical framework, a physical armature or mm -hmm. center into yeah. art making, into the world, into that world. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, it, and, you know, some people don't. Some people oh. have, you know, an idea in their head, ever, you know, and... Mm -hmm image let's say and you know the image is enough the image is enough need yeah. thing you know so yes. different ways there's different you know different ways and i know the very sensual process to painting that yeah. i like but it just somehow the the um the cohesion of cohesion of it coherence of it yeah. often eludes me. And that's why, Mark, if you remember, I always used photographs as yes. star. Absolutely. Yeah. Fine. Why not? Yeah. 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 <clears throat> so. And I love, Mark, what you said, too, about adding paper, cardboard for your pieces, too. So there are so many different approaches. And I guess our job is to kind of figure out what works so that it stimulates our creativity and- Whatever works, whatever leads you. Works. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And Marie, yeah. you were yeah. doing this too, Marie. What, sweetie? You were doing this also by adding things to your texture, to your paintings. Oh, uh, yeah. And doing very different kinds of things. These things I think are just, they're almost food for creativity. That's a nice way to put it. Yeah. <clears throat> Interesting. On that note, <laughs> I think we are done for today. <laughs> Thank you. It was nice joining us and uh, I hope we see each other we'll next, see week. next week. Yeah. Yes. Thanks. Sir. Barbara, remember there's just one last one last thing. I just want to yeah. emphasize <clears throat> Excuse remember me. this discussion, you know, and even you know, print this same image out, do it again, you know, or you know what I mean, or play with it or cut it up, you know, and you know, just go there, develop it. Do a, uh, do some variations. It's I want to do more of these, but I don't know if I can use the same image again. I, I, I think I have to go on to something else. Well, the, the palette <laughs> nice, you know, the, the subdued palette, you know, or the black and white. I mean, yeah. the black yeah. and white. Uh, yeah. You know, so all those, those are elements, you know, that you can uh, revisit. Yes, we'll do. Okay. Thank you, very helpful. Good. Both of you, very Great helpful. Class. So see y'all next week. Thank you, Barbara. I love it. Have a good Thank week. You. Love time. yours, your work too, Leslie. Ma it was hold fun. on a second. Can you stop the live stream? I mean, and then we can talk still. Oh. Is it still on the live stream? Yeah, of course. Mm.